beside still waters, and restoreth my soul, and leads me in the path of righteousness, and for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. Savior, lead me lest I stray. Gently lead me all the way. I am safe when by thy side. I would in thy love abide. Lead me, lead me, Savior, all the way. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and I hear the birds sing sweetly in the tree. When I look down from lofty mountain, Grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. And when I think that God, the Son not sparing, for him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden glad, bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. Savior, God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, God to thee, how great thou art. This is assurance. Jesus is mine, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. I'll praise my Savior all the day long. Let me bow in the presence of the Almighty. Oh God, we bow in your presence, giving thanks again for the life of our dear sister. For the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we ask now, God, that you allow your angels to swing low, that your people might feel your power and presence in this place as we celebrate and affirm and recognize the gift that you gave us. In our dear sister, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Blessings to all on this wonderful day. Please know that our doors swing on welcome hinges, our restrooms are to my right and to my left. And you're welcome to stand and greet one another with love. Uh, but please, my brothers and sisters, let's keep our masks on as we continue to follow all the protocols of the CDC. Amen? Amen.
come by here. The Lord, come by here. The purpose of this gathering today, my brothers and sisters, is to celebrate, affirm, recognize the life and legacy of Sister Joyce Dixon. So please, my brothers and sisters, let us put our hands together and give God some praise for a lady, a giver, a charmer, an aunt, a sister, a mother, a friend, a child of God. Today we tell death, don't be proud. Because those who die in the Lord shall be raised with Christ. So let us now hear the great hymn of our faith. Great is thy faithfulness.
noon, and he is faithful. The reading of our text this afternoon is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. His rod and his staff, they shall comfort me. He has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And surely he has anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And also selected is the New Testament, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning with the 50th verse. Now this, I say, brothers and sisters, flesh and blood will not inherit eternal life. Neither shall corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall put on incorruption, and the mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as, as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, may God bless you. The word of God to the people of God. Let us bow together in prayer. Most holy and loving God, for this day we give you praise and thanksgiving. As we come as those who mourn the loss of one who's so dear to us, in Joyce Martin Dixon, we would be remiss if we did not celebrate her victory over death and pain. We thank you, Lord, for the light that she brought to each one of our lives in various stages and in various ways. We thank you that she was a woman of grace and style, a woman of conviction and a woman of faith. We thank you for the lessons that she taught us by her presence, through her giving, and Lord, just by the smile that she shared with us so graciously. We thank you that she loved you with her whole heart, and so her dying is a new life. She is lost to us physically, Lord, but she has received the reward that awaits all of those who prepare themselves to meet you in peace when this life is over. So I ask that you would pour out your strength and your comfort and your wisdom upon her family and her friends and those who were so close to her. We thank you as a church family for the light and the life that she brought to Providence. And we thank you, Lord, that even though she is no longer physically with us, her works not only follow her, but her love remains with us. So Lord, just be God in our midst. Receive her as your daughter. And Lord, we just thank you for sharing her for just a few moments with us. And we do look forward to seeing her again when this life is over. We bless your name and we give you praise and thanksgiving in Christ. Amen. At this time, would we have all those who are going to offer reflections come to my left on the first row? Maestro, would you play a little bit of, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I laid my burdens down. I feel so much better since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down.
in June of 1994 when my mom passed. And she was just that, my mother. Most of the stuff that I was going to say has already been said here. I'm just going to confirm what the other people said that I knew about my aunt. She was a daughter. She was a sister. She was a wife. She was a military wife. I think I already said that she was a mother to her two children. But God saw fit to take them what we would say early. But thank God she joined with them now. She was a friend. A dear friend. If, if you were a friend of Aunt Joyce, you had a dear friend. A dear friend. She gave of her time. She gave of the finances that God had, had blessed her with to bless other people or the organizations and stuff that she believed in. Go back to my mother as her being my mother. Now I'm going to talk about you. When she was my, when I called her, she called me, and I said, hey, Aunt Joyce, or she would say, hey, Rodney. Uh, the conversation was probably going to go pretty good. <laughs> but when the mother part came in, tough luck. She gave it to you straight. I've never heard her use a curse word, but you felt like when she finished with you that you had just been cursed out. <laughs> Didn't know it because she did it with such grace and dignity. Yeah. I'm going to miss you on that. I'm going to miss you dearly. But as what was this you said, she's with God now. She swear we all gonna have to cross this road one day. One day we're gonna all have to cross this road, not unless God tarries and He comes and take you back with Him when He comes back. But like I said, she was a lot of things to a lot of people. But one thing she was, she was a child of God. Amen. Amen. When she talked about my nephew Robin, because she said she talked about her wonderful nephew Robin, just gonna let you know that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, and I'm Little Ray. Uh, I'm the youngest uh, of my mother, of the two. Who, uh, uh, first of all, Giving praises to my, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Always. Amen. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank a part of my family. I want to thank our Gwen, <clears throat> Valerie, Tammy, Mike, and the rest of the Dixon family. Amen. <sighs> but God sent David. He sent you, and I thank you so much for everything you did by George, because we couldn't be here. Because of our commitments in life, God has his way of doing things. <laughs> Whew, I George was my aunt, and I had no choice to choose her as my aunt. But she was the best aunt I could ever have. When I joined the golf, my godmother, 
that hardship. And as my brother said, when my mom passed, she became my mother. I chose. Why? Because she. Excuse me. She was such elegant. She was hard. She could tell you, she, we would have conversations similar to what my brother was saying. And she didn't agree with it. She would say, okay, Reggie, we need to talk about this. <laughs> Woo, you knew you were scared to have a real conversation. <laughs> she was the monarch of our family. Amen. And she carried it well. Amen. Every day. And I thank her. My aunt always put her best foot forward in everything that she did. Everything. Love, charities, whatever. And one thing she did expect of you, if you were involved with her, was that you put your best foot forward. And if you didn't, you got what I got. We need to talk about <laughs> if I could describe my aunt she would say I would say as you if you dealt with her you talked with her she was a pastor here knows it well She would listen. Marvelous here. Quiet. But then she gave her part. Some you enjoyed, some you did not. But whatever she did, she made it. She changed lives around the world. We can honor her her of her friends by doing the same. Change life. Change one. Change one. You can change 50. Rest in peace, our queen. I love God, your sacrifice. Thank you. Whew. neighbors on the Connell Road in Greensboro. Our neighborhood was an old school, very close-knit community called The Grove, where mostly everyone knew one another and looked out for one another. We were brought up to be caring and compassionate. I was the only girl in my family and really enjoyed <clears throat> running next door to spend time with Joyce and her sisters. They babysat me and I was adopted by them as their little sister. Years later, when Joyce and her husband, June, started dating, they would take me with them to visit his family in Little Texas. I grew very close to them, and they became family. 
Later, when they married and started their family, I got to babysit their children. Junie and Janice, as well as Joyce's nephews, Robin and Reggie. Over the 70 some years that Joyce and I knew one another, no matter where we were, we always stayed connected. I admired her greatly for the phenomenal woman that she was. I feel blessed to have had her as my role model and mentor who inspired me to become a social worker. Joyce and I were always there for each other during both happy and sad times. During her illness, I continued to learn so much from Joyce. How to stay positive, be strong, and to put your trust in God. She showed me by example how to face life's many challenges. How to laugh, how to pray, and most importantly, how to love. Joyce was an earth angel who positively touched each of our lives and that of so very many others. She will be deeply missed by all of us and forever in our hearts. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Gwendolyn Dixon Willis, the proud sister-in-law of Joyce Martin Dixon. I am here today to share with you how much our family, the Dixons, love Joyce. Reggie and Robin, we love you too so much. We first give thanks and praise to God for blessing and loaning Joyce to us for 88 years. Our parents, Jacob Dixon Sr. and Florella Wade Dixon, had 10 children. We grew up on a farm down in Alamance County. Joyce's parents also were from that area, so they had roots in Alamance County, and our parents were friends. <laughs> My oldest brother is Jacob Dixon Jr. We affectionately called him June and Joyce were married 49 years. When they married, I was six years old. So I had the opportunity to love Joyce, not only being a child, but also into my adulthood. To June's siblings, she was a sister. When asking my brothers and sisters about Joyce, they shared many wonderful family reflections. I would like to share some of those with you today. I will also share what we think that June Roger and Harry will say about Joyce. Today, we have five sisters and my brother here in attendance. My sister Ann in California could not be here with us today. I'm going to give you the family order so you can know who said what. <laughs> Our family order is June, then it's Dorothy, then Pauline, then Evelyn, then Jean, then Roger, then Ann, then Harry, and Leon, and me. I, sometimes when her mom called us the wrong name, she would tell us, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with June. June would probably say, Joyce, I'm so proud of you. Junie, Janice, and I are happy today, though, that you've joined us here in heaven. Dorothy says, I first met Joyce when I was a teenager. 
June and Joyce met at Barnes Chapel Church during one of those homecoming services. Joyce was our first sister-in-law. She was always gracious. She was generous, kind, and much, much more. Pauline would say, or said, Joyce was the perfect officer's wife. When Bubble and Jew were stationed in Germany at the same time, we shared many wonderful experiences. Joyce was always so good to me. Evelyn, Joyce, I'm going to really miss you in all those family celebrations and dinners, especially with the upcoming holidays. I will miss making you your favorite potato salad and chicken pie. <laughs> Thanks for always being so special to me. Jean would say, Joyce, we shared many, many good times and laughs when you stayed at our house while you finished up your degree at Bennett College. If Roger were here, he would say, Joyce, you have always supported me as a deacon at Martin's Chapel Church. Anne would say, Joyce, we sure enjoyed golf, and I shall always remember us sitting in the Masters Tournament together. Harry. Harry said, thank you, Joyce, for always supporting all my ideas and inventions. Joyce and Harry love gadgets. <laughs> Leon. Joyce, you and June were outstanding business partners. You contributed equally to the success and growth of your company. My sister-in-laws also love Joyce, Zuma, Fern, and Sandy. They are here today as well. My nieces and nephews love Joyce as well, but she was so proud of them, proud of everything they did and all of their accomplishments. To those in Greensboro, Regina, Paula, and Mike, she was so thankful for you being there to help her. Our cousins would miss Joyce. Ours especially was a long, many conversations. Our family today would also like to give special thanks to Tammy Parsons and Valerie Spalding Little. So, I'm number 10. <coughs> what would I say? I would say, Joyce, you love me and I love you. Thank you for trusting me to help you. Joyce often called me the little family supervisor. <laughs> but then she would quickly add, but thank you for helping us all. After Joyce moved to Greensboro from Cocoa Beach at the June's death, we shared many things together. We ch shared church services. We shared community events, lots of banquets, trips to Pleasant Grove, and participation in many organizations. You know about Joyce and Martin Dixon's Intergenerational Center, but what you may not know is that she also gave a little bus to the center. And in the bus, in the seat, she named each one by individual family members. I'd like to share a story with you in closing that I think that Joyce remembers and would like to hear again. Joyce and I went to a lot of organizational meetings. And at one meeting, I had planned to attend, but I could not go. The meeting was going to be held at a member's house. My daughter, Michelle, was going to take on Joyce, as she was also a member of the same organization. Before leaving, I told Michelle, I said, Michelle, ma'am, they have a sweet deal, and you insist that Aunt Joyce hold on to you, because you know how independent she is. When Michelle got home after dropping Joyce off, I asked her, I said, Michelle, did Aunt Joyce let you help her? Michelle turns to me and says, no. <laughs> and I said, no, she said no because I wore these high heel shoes and Aunt Joyce wore the right kind of shoes. So Aunt Joyce said, hold on to me, Michelle. <laughs> Joyce helped many of us up and down steep hills. Hallelujah. 
up and down steep hills because she wore the right kind of shoes. She wore the shoes of her faith. She wore the shoes of love of family. She wore the shoes of giving, but she also wore the shoes of humility. Joyce, thank you for being such a wonderful, wonderful family member. We the Dixons love and shall miss you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Michael McKinney, and I'm one of Aunt Joyce's nephews. <clears throat> First, I want to thank all of you for being here and being present to honor and show your love and support and respect for this life well lived. I want to take this opportunity to share some reflections about Aunt Joyce's involvement in the community and her philanthropy. You know, Aunt Joyce was the epitome of a Southern lady with charm <coughs> and grace. And every decision she made about being involved and giving back, she put her Lord and Savior first and prayed about every one of them. That's who she was. And she believed that doing for others was simply a requirement for being here on this earth. Aunt Joyce and I, we spoke just about every day. We would often discuss the social ills of our community and society. We would talk about natural disasters or some other kind of tragedy somewhere around the world. And she would always say, you know, my heart goes out to those folks. I just feel like I ought to do something with you. And I would ask, I said, well, what do you want to do, Aunt Joyce? She said, I don't know. And we would toss about ideas, and when one would strike her, she would always say, hmm. <laughs> and in a few seconds, she said again, hmm. I like that. We just got to do something. Let's do that. And she would, and the rest would be history. She loved the veterans. You know, no more than a month ago, on her sick bed, she and I were engaged in conversations about veterans. We had talked about erecting a community of town and houses for homeless veterans. And she said, well, what would be the first step? I laid out the process. And she said, well, let's do it. When you get to the part you need me, just call me and I'll make sure you got what you need. <laughs> That's who she was. When she and Uncle Jim were in the military, she was highly engaged in the wives clubs and the Golf Association for Women, and on the women's bowling team. She hosted numerous lunches for senior citizens, and she entertained heads of state. She could interact with the most sophisticated intellect, and she could humbly engage with those who are less fortunate. She had a way of making everyone feel valued. On the other hand, Robin, <laughs> when you did something she didn't like or there was something she didn't approve of with her grace and charm she could tear into you and I could be a witness and when she finished you feel like she just gave you a huge donation and you say thank you <laughs> <coughs> while in Florida and beyond Aunt Joyce was a member of the Lynx Incorporated where she later became the Southern Area Director at the same time with the Lynx, she founded Linkage to Life, a national recognized organization or donor organ, excuse me, a national recognized organ donation and bone marrow awareness program, which is responsible for saving thousands of lives. She was member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. She was a member of the library board in North Carolina Central University. At Brevard uh, County and Brevard College Community College in Florida, she was the chair of the Board of Trustees. She served on the Astronaut Memorial Foundation and her alma mater, Bennett College, where she was a trustee. She served on my board at the American Cancer Society. And she loved serving on the board at Hayes Taylor YMCA. 
She was the chair of the board here at Providence Baptist Church, and I knew she was the chair because one Sunday I went into the restroom, and I had never witnessed this before, and there was Kleenex and lotion and mouthwash <laughs> and shoe buffs. And, and I talked to a lady that day. I said, Providence is stepping up its game. I said, we had all kinds of stuff in the men room. She says, yeah, I'll put it there. I told Reverend Chubb that men like the room too. <laughs> Not only did she give up her time and her talent, but she also gave her treasures. She made significant contributions and donations to many organizations. Aunt Joyce alma mater at Bennett College, she was the only alumna to give $1 million, that large of a donation. She gave for the Martin Dixon Intergenerational Center for children, but that wasn't enough. She gave the bus. And she didn't stop there. She took on the task of refurbishing and remodeling every parlor in the dormitories at Bennett. She gave multiple significant donations to Cone Hospital, Hayes Taylor YMCA, the Tanger Performing Arts Center, Black Entrepreneurs Museum, Reverend Gerald Martin Chapel. She gave to the Muscular Dystry Foundation and to Federal State University. And she gave to her beloved Providence Baptist Church, just to name a few. She flew to Germany yearly to present scholarships in honor of her children at a school named after her son. She also gave scholarships to Bennett College and to family members. In essence, if I had to sum up the motto of Aunt Joyce, I believe these words would do it best, accredited by the writer John Wesley. Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. That was who she was. Well done, Chris. Well done. God, his son, 
not sparing. He sent him, he sent him to die, to die to take away my sin. That on the cross, my burden gladly buried. Won't you know he bled? and died just to take away my sin. Then sing my soul, my Savior, my Savior God to thee. of this historic branch of Zion, the Reverend Dr. Darrell Aaron, distinguished members of the clergy, members of this legendary and well-known Martin and Dixon family, and to each of you who have gathered for this home-going celebration service in memory of the Dr. Joyce Martin Dixon, one whom we love so dearly. Now, if you knew Dr. Joyce Dixon and her husband, Colonel Jacob Dixon, you knew that they were very close. They were very much alike in so many ways. Therefore, it is only fitting that I come to you today using the same text which was read 
at his home going celebration 18 years ago, and these words as recorded in the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. For I am never ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only to me, but unto all of them that love his appearance. God's word for God's people. I want to speak for a few minutes from this subject. The Lord has called her name. The Lord has called her name. An untold number of persons celebrate the life and legacy of Sister Joyce Martin Dixon and the number is too great for me to recognize. However, we want to assure the descendants of the Dixon and Martin families that we are all in prayer with you and for you during this most difficult and sorrowful time. While we lament on this day, we also rejoice over this precious gift God has shared with the world. We know Joyce was a Renaissance woman. We've heard it stated repeatedly. She was a great humanitarian. She was a wonderful leader who left a permanent impression on virtually every road she traveled and every journey she embarked upon. Great and solemn reflections crowd in upon us today Beautiful and splendid recollections of this rare pioneer and dynamic leader converge before us. It is said that when a great leader is no longer in our circles, we can't quite conceptualize how much has been taken from us. The passing of George's physical presence radically alters the landscape of our soul. It is hard to realize that we do not have her among us as she once was. Joyce meant so much to us, and a number of you feel these same sentiments about her husband, Colonel Jacob Dixon, her son, Captain Jacob Dixon III, and of course, her young daughter, Janice. All three who took up full residence in God's holy and heavenly kingdom many years ago. Yes, Joyce walked among giants, produced solutions at strategic tables, helped to open doors and influence the quality of life, not only for thousands, but for millions. Held hands with people from all levels of society and never lost the common touch. Her name is etched in buildings extending from the General Hap Arnold High School in Wiesbaden, in Germany, to the Intergenerational Learning Center just around the corner at Bennett College. Her accomplishments are so, so many, and I will not attempt to recount or highlight or even cite them all. Her life is underscored with accomplishments, achievements, and successes emblazed in perpetuity, treasured in the hearts of humanity, and chronicled in the annals of time. She journeyed on the same transformational plane as did our founders, whole and true, to the long-held philosophy to be a part of a progressive growth, which is the dream of the visionary and the theory of the philosopher always holding steadfast to the pericope that is recorded in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, that says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Joyce loved the Lord, 
And she loved God's church. She wanted the best for the Lord's house and reached out to a number of churches and ensured that their parking lot, yes, was paved. Pews were updated with cushions, replacing the hot seat created by the wood. She reached out to various outreach ministries and funded them, and academic scholarships were provided to students seeking a higher level of education. This woman was blessed with a godly heart and a convicted, infectious, servitudinal missiology call, which only God can give. Her angelical spirit brought sunshine, hope, and goodwill to the village and to the world in which she distinguished herself as a laborer in the vineyard. Joyce had, as Dr. Gardner C. Taylor, that great theologian who pastored Concord Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, would term an appeal to the hero within us. To the God-likeness within us, she resonated an aura with her kind voice and that convicting smile. She, as we will agree, was purpose-driven and endeavored to attain quantifiable results that translated into meaningful progress, not for her, but again for the village. It has been said that dreams can create conflict that can expand the imaginations into great works. This was her mantra, which was her refrain and her exhortation. Her ideas did not stop with her. Sometimes she wanted to say no to her appeal. However, with her sacred and well-regarded belief, you would lose control of your audibles and yes, would ooze from your mouth. <laughs> she had an amazing power to rally others to the aid of the disenfranchised, to the underserved, to the least, the lost, and the left out. She knew the importance of the Johannan gospel, which is to work while it is day, for night cometh, which no one can work, John 9, 4. Joyce always exuded a kindred spirit, undergirded with tremendous pride, was a source of inspiration and was known to thrive masterfully in diverse arenas, whether they be civic, military, political, academic, or spiritual, at the local, national, or even the international level. Just consider the incredible work and leadership that she provided in leading the International Tissue and Organ Donation Initiative. I remember some 50 years ago when we were in Europe, how she and her husband, then the Colonel Jacob Dixon, were considered to be the most notable and distinguished couple on the installation because of their dignity because of their intelligentsia, and yes, their good looks didn't hurt. They were a lovely couple, and they drove a Mercedes 250 SL at that time. They just broke all the stereotypes. Jacob was a commander, the commander, in fact, of the NATO intelligent community in West Germany and was a symbol of hope that officers of color could ascend to greater rank. They both were tremendous role models, especially for young officers and young couples. Always had time. And you know, I did the math. She at that time was 36 and 37 years of age, not in her late 50s or 60s. She had that compassion and never suffered from the stress of compassion. Upon Jacob's retirement from the Air Force, she and he became entrepreneurs and launched 
a major business at the Kennedy Space Center. They were acknowledged as being one of the most successful and efficiently managed in businesses in the Kennedy Space Program. So in closing, we leave today knowing that Joyce Martin Dixon's life was classic and epic, a grand tale woven only by God himself. I think of Maya Angelou's pungent and touching words when she said, a mighty oak has fallen. And then I think of Gardner C. Taylor, who then said that an empty, gaping, and glaring space has now been left against the sky where she stood. If you were to ask me where is Joyce, I would say somewhere where weariness and disillusionment does not come, where winter's chills never troubles and prejudice never poisons, where the flowers bloom forever, where the song never steals and the day never dies. But if you were then to ask me, what would Jesus say? I would tell you that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. God's word for God's people. And God's people then said, Amen. 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 We have done as the Lord has required, and I believe Sister Dixon would be proud the way we have celebrated her life. Come on, let's give God some praise. Some glad morning when this life is over. I shall fly away. May we all stand.
Thank you.